guys, I have my sketchbook right here and I was experimenting with some different pen and ink techniques uh, because I got commissioned by my sister to draw a Korean magpie. So I did these studies to get me going and I decided to be a little bit more mindful about my sketchbook. I got to interview another artist named Caitlin Yoder and her Instagram is work.of.part underscore is her Instagram and she does these really cool sketchbooks like they look like little works of art and so I was like man I, I could really up my sketchbook game so I'm gonna show you today how would I break down the steps for drawing a magpie and I do look at these reference photos online and I put together a mood board and then I kind of look at and see okay what might be some good poses of these birds that my sister might like. So I'm going to go into drawing from a reference, how do I alter it, and then I'm going to go ahead and ink on top of it, and I'm going to go over some of the pens and tools that I like to use. So I'm going to go over the tools right, guys, first. I'm going to go over really quickly about the, the paper that I'm using for the drawing of the magpie. I have a sketchbook. Um, it's a Canson Mixed Media. This is a 98 pound paper. If you're not really familiar with paper, I love paper primarily because I had a background um, working as a graphic designer. So paper can make a big difference in how your drawing is presented at the end. So this is a heavier weight paper. And then I just wanted to show you, these are some different kinds of paper that I just had around the house. One is a regular copy paper, the cheapest paper I can think of you buy. The next two are two different kinds of cover stock paper. So it's a thicker weight paper, about 40 pounds and the brightnesses okay so paper has different brightnesses because everybody goes well it's white right it's the same but if you look here look at look at the brightness like it's this middle one that appears to be the whitest white okay so so papers can be kind of fall into being more of a warmer white and less bright or they can be more cool and not as bright so it really depends on you what do you like working on also papers have different types of tooth so when i feel the paper how smooth is it so this is very smooth the canson mixed media paper this definitely has a tooth to it so if i feel the paper there's a little bit of a tooth to it it's more tooth um, and texture compared to this type of paper another reason why i like the canson is because like when I had a pen and ink drawing right here that I had, when I look at the other side of it, it doesn't bleed through. So make sure you use a heavier weight paper if you're going to actually ink it, because definitely on this one it's going to bleed through because it's so it's so thin. And then it could also you want to test it out for. I always do like little swatches of my pen and ink just to kind of see like how much bleeding am I going to get because some papers you'll find that it just it's like drawing on paper towel and then the ink just like gets everywhere and you're like it depends on the effect you want if you want that effect that's great so be really mindful test out your paper do little swatches for yourself and then you know it's gonna kind of expect these go over the different kinds of pens that I use and different um, materials that I use for actually making my marks of my magpies okay so I'm gonna go over the first pen that I really like is this Tombow right here I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I put my hand underneath. There you go. Okay, so these are great because the tips are flexible. Okay, so instead of being like what you think of a traditional brush pen, um, these hold up really well. So if you're just new starting out with inking, um, they're just going to hold up a lot longer. Okay, so these are great. The next one I got a recommendation. This is from Jake Parker, um, the Copic Gazenfunda brush pen which is great and this holds up pretty well so you can see how the tip it looks like an actual brush and so what I found is if I use the cheaper brushes pens and you press too hard or you're you're not careful with it the tip gets worn really quickly and then you just lost that pen but anyways the next one I used for some of the whites to bring back some of the whites is a, a white jelly roll pen okay these are great so that's great for getting white. And it just has like a little ballpoint pen tip on it. Okay. And the next thing that I tried was using a regular round paintbrush. So round because the tip of it is round. This is a size six. 
I used a cheap brush. I actually got this free with, uh, I think, some kind of watercolor set that I bought because I didn't want to use my really good paint brushes because um, when I, if you don't clean out your brushes really well, I mean, it, it does stain a little bit, the indie ink. And so I'm using Black Magic Higgins for when I did the, um, the actual like brush with the pen um, ink. So this is great. Really lays down um, really nice and dark. And when you erase over your lines, it's not going to wear away the ink. Like I will admit certain varying degrees of pens you want to test out to check their steadfastness or when you erase because a lot of times I'll go ahead and draw and when I draw I did get this from Jake Parker. <laughs> I did. I like this. I like the Prismacolor color erase. I have the indigo blue and I think on the podcast um, Lee White recommended the Tuscan red that he, that's what he uses um so these are great for drawing and i actually use these to do my initial line drawing but i would check your pens like when you go to the art supply store they usually have like a little pad there so as an example i'm just going to take a little sheet of paper here you can test out your pen And then I do an eraser test. So, so this, after it dries, just erase it away. And then you can see, I'll press even harder to see, um, your cheaper pens, the actual ink will rub off with a regular white eraser. So you want to really think about it when you're buying your pens. Um, when you tend to buy the cheaper pens the ink is cheaper so when you go to a race you're like man there goes all my lines and I got to go back and re-ink it so I definitely agree like the Copic works great Tombow Tombow is pretty good um I had another brand uh the Faber Castles and they're nice and you get a good variety it's a good value set but I found that when I was using them the and here's one right here I still like it but I will always have to go back and ink stuff. You're, you're like, really? So just be aware different brands and why something's a little bit more expensive. It's going to be um, the quality of the tip. It's probably going to be the quality of the actual ink inside the pen and how steadfast is it when you start really erasing over the top of it. Now, if you do know that you have a pen that isn't the best quality and you don't want to have to do a lot of re-inking, just use the kneaded eraser. That usually is a lot um, less uh, harsh on the ink and it won't pull as much, okay? All right, so that's my tips for the materials that I use. I'm not gonna use all of these in my demo. Um, I'll probably use the Tombow the most and maybe go over with the brush um, pen, the, the Copic. So anyways, it's just a little less messy. On to the part where I'm actually going to draw the bird and I'm going to go over how I would traditionally draw this bird. Um, I have to tape my paper to my board because otherwise I will move things around constantly. Okay, so I have an image that I found and when it comes to images, I'm going to have a separate video about where it's a good idea to look for royalty free images because there is copyright and when a photographer takes a photograph, that's their work and when you copy it exactly and you're not making changes to it or thinking about using multiple references then you're infringing on their rights but I just want to kind of throw that out there okay so when I start drawing um, I'm thinking about the head of the bird and they're usually round and I'm drawing really lightly okay now if you're new to drawing when you ghost okay if I use, and I think of this like in golfing, when you see golfers before they're about ready to swing, they practice swing and then they actually commit. So I'm just like ghosting over and then I'll like go over it. Probably the biggest thing when you first start drawing, you will spend too much time making way too many marks. The professional artists, when I watch them drawing, it's really about making fewer marks and indicating and lightly and then you don't have to do as much erasing. Now when I think about the body of the bird, there is like a little bit of space for the neck. It's kind of an egg-like shape, 
to me and it kind of is wider in this area and then it's narrow like an egg on its side but it's yeah kind of tilted so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of space and then I'm gonna make this egg shape I'm ghosting it and then it's super super light okay all right, so now I've got these two shapes in relationship to each other, and then I'm gonna actually think about how they connect together. And the bird's neck goes down and around. So now I got that connected, then I'm gonna take the other line at the top, and I'm gonna connect it, and it goes down, okay? Then I know that there's a relationship between the width of the body and then the actual tail feathers. And so um, there's something called sighting when you're drawing. And so when you use your pencil, it could be like a measuring stick, like a ruler, and you can use it up against the photograph of the bird. And then you can go like, okay, um, I just know from having drawn all those magpies about the width of the body is gonna give you the length of the tail feather and it's a little bit longer. So if it's, a, if it's not exact, that's okay. And then I look at the angle so I just made like a little tick mark right there and then I look at the actual angle so you can use your pencil or I actually use a knitting needle these are great so I can use this to kind of like line it up with the edge of the tail feathers and I can go like oh that's actually at this angle I need to think about it and you can clearly see angles better another thing you can do is think about the relationship of that angle with another part of the body, uh, bird's body. So I'll usually think about maybe the angle here to the end of the tail feathers, and maybe there's certain things that have to line up, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, draw on the tail feathers, and it's just a line like this. See how I curve it down, and then it goes out towards that little mark. So it's kind of almost like connecting the dots. That's the way I like to think about it. Okay tail feathers there's like a curve right there and then it's narrow here and then it kind of goes out okay now birds legs okay and make this part of the legs right here so it's a diagonal that goes like this and because the legs are parallel to each other I am gonna have this other leg on the other side of it and sometimes I'll draw in a circle I'll draw in a circle so it reminds me, okay, there's a connection there, okay? Bird's beak, I'm gonna go ahead and, really, it's kind of like a curved V. And they separate, and because it's a magpie, this one kind of curves over a little bit more than the lower beak. Okay, their heads, though, it's very round here, but what happens is it curves, and then it flattens out a little bit, because they're related to crows a little bit. Um, this one in the photograph has a more rounded head, but you know what? I'm going to actually square it off a little bit to make it different. All right, so now I've got the body, and I've got the beak, and then I want to think about the eye. Okay, so relationship of the beak here, beak curves here. I'm going to go above the beak, and there's a bit of a space right here. And I'm going to start out with a circle, and then I just kind of like football it. I make those little marks for the football eyes. Okay, so then the marks of the feathers, because there's a difference in the colors, now I'm going to go back in and there's the white of here and there's the white of the body and then there's this black hind portion right here. The wing will go around and then curve here and then it's going to curve here. Okay. I'm just lightly drawing that in and then I'm gonna go ahead and draw in my actual bird's feet okay and I'm just indicating you want to think about it, it's like a long oblong kind of hot dog shape okay all right, so it's supposed to be sitting on this rock and I'm gonna go ahead and indicate where the rest of the rock is. And I'm not even really paying attention to the reference anymore because now I'm just drawing the contours. Okay, so I've got my magpie. I'm thinking I'm gonna fill this out a little bit more. I feel like it needs to be filled out a little. 
his neck is looking a little bit thin. The feathers, I need to indicate there's this white here. And then it kind of goes around here. And then the lines of the feathers here, here, and here. And actually, I just noticed this, the black behind part, it goes around like here. And then there's some indicated more tail feathers here. And I'm going to curve them a little bit. And then I'm going to do the top here. It goes up and then out because there's that other wing on the other side. So it's going to create that curve right there. Okay. All right. So now I have my actual drawing. Okay. And the nice thing about these color race, it's really easy to erase any marks. Okay. But I'm going to save that towards the end. Okay, so right, now guys, I'm going to move so on to the next we're gonna step. Now we're going to go into the inking, that. and I am using my Tombow WSVS150. That's the only thing that really indicates the size here, and that it's Tombow. Okay, so it's got the flexible tip that I like to use, and I'm going to just start out with tracing the bird. And now I'm not really looking at the reference that much. I'm really... And I can start out with a thinner line, and so when you think about it using the very tip... camera ran out of space so um, I you missed the part right here how I got this texture right here so I wanted to show you how I achieved that okay so I used a towel so if I you think about like printmaking you know you can treat ink the same way so all I did is I used my black magic here I used my brush and I just have this little corner of my towel here and then I just brush that on top it in there brush it on top and then what I did is when I use this and I just put my finger on the inside of it and then I just dab it's gonna produce this texture and you can even like smear it like dab and then pull down and I think it helps give it that nice little rocky texture okay so but that's how I would ink this and that's how I got some of the different textures and techniques in this um, magpie drawing. So. 